Hi guys, welcome back to another fun DIY sailboat refit video here about good old Athena. If you're new to my channel, I have spent the last four years refitting Athena. The end goal is for my fiance Ava and I to be able to start cruising full time in 185 days. That might seem like a long time, but there's a ton of work to be done. I've already made some good progress this week. My parents swung by and helped with the sanding in the forward cabin. That means everything that needs to get varnished or painted in there is basically good to go. Speaking of the forward cabin, before my parents showed up, I primed and painted the inside of the clothing locker as well as all of the drawer boxes. So hopefully I'll be able to install the drawer boxes in a couple of days. It might not look like I've made a lot of progress here on my board, but I still think I'm on track to be able to move into the forward cabin by the end of February. That way I can put the 30 foot sailboat I've been living aboard for the last six years up for sale and only have one boat to worry about. This week I'd like to get the chain locker sanded and prepped for paint. That is going to be quite the party. It's a confined space with an angry angle grinder and plenty of itchy itchy fiberglass dust. Now I'm turning 40 on Saturday and I think I'll save that task as my little birthday present to myself. Right here next to the entrance into the forward cabin is where the washer and dryer is going to be located. And I also want to get this area prepped for paint this week. And uh, we'll get back to this in just a few seconds. Also on the to-do list for this week is to run some of that conduit underneath the cabin sole from over here where the freezer is going to go into the clothing locker. You might be wondering, but why do you need conduit in a clothing locker? That's because the little digital switching unit that's going to be controlling the lights in the mast and the lighting in the forward cabin is going to be located in the clothing locker. Now, hopefully that little digital switching unit is going to show up a little bit later this week. If it does, then we can take a look at that. I'm not sure I've got everything I need to hook it up and I don't think I have a compatible USB interface to program it with. But yeah, if it shows up, we can take a quick peek at it. Let's get started on the washer dryer area. This area here is where the old forward head used to be located. And there was a piece of plywood that came in at a bit of an angle into the door frame here. I've since then, as you can see, removed the old forward head and that's left behind this weird gap here. If I had more time, then I would rip out this old door frame and simply just build a new one. But I am very pressed for time, so I'm going to reuse the old one here, which means I have to somehow fill this gap. When I removed that piece of plywood from the old forward head, the door frame also got a little bit wobbly, which is not something you want. So I want to shove something in there that can help stabilize the door frame again. Plenty of thickened epoxy and a small piece of lurch should do the trick. Normally it is of course more fun to build something you can be proud of, something new. And if I had the time, I would build a new door frame, but I am very pressed for time, so I'm gonna do this fix instead. The fix will work and the door frame will be strong as, well, nails? What's something really strong? Anywho, it'll work. It'll just have been more fun to build something new. I've already cut the lurch to length, so just a few squirts of thing the epoxy and we should be good. And smush. The reason this fix is going to work is because when epoxy is thickened with 406, it has excellent gap filling properties. I'm going to leave my little lurch fix here in place overnight to let the epoxy cure. And then tomorrow we can worry about this little bit of unevenness here. I think the best way to deal with that is just going to be a little bit of filling compound. It's the next day and I'm happy to report that the door frame now feels absolutely rock solid. I swung by the workshop and picked up all the drawer boxes. I already have all of the drawer slides, so tomorrow we can get these installed. And a little earlier today, this box arrived. In the box is that little digital switching unit I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video. It's not really much to look at. It looks pretty anonymous, but it should open up some interesting possibilities here aboard Athena. Now, I am gonna check tonight off camera to see if the USB interface I've got for the NMA 2000 network will work for programming this, but I don't believe that's gonna be the case. But let's get back to the washer dryer area. Like I said, my little fix here did a great job of stiffening up the door frame, but I still have this bit of jankiness here to deal with. I've got two options for dealing with this mess here. I can either cover all of this up with a thin sheet of plywood 
or I can use a little bit of filling compound, a fairing compound to smooth all of this out. I've got some sheets of four millimeter plywood up at the workshop that I was planning on using for this. But if I use that four millimeter plywood, then the surface of the plywood is gonna be proud of the surface of the door frame. So I think my best option here is simply just to fair the little bit of unevenness I've got going on here. The ever astute viewer will have noted that I used a polyester based product. These are smaller areas that I'm working on and I wanna get this done fast. I only get a very short working time with this stuff, but like I mentioned, it's smaller areas and the big upside is that this stuff is sandable after about an hour. That means I can easily apply a second layer of this stuff today. Whereas if I'd used a proper fairing compound, like the stuff I used for the deck hole joint, then I'd have to wait 10 to 20 hours before I could apply more fairing compound. This stuff stinks something fierce and there are also some pretty nasty warning labels on the stuff. So that's why you may have seen me just swap out the cartridges here on my mask before I started applying this stuff. I've been airing out the boat to get rid of the stink and while I was waiting for the stink to vamoose I swung by the workshop and picked up this package which contained this big thing of paint. This is the stuff I'll use in the forward cabin for all of the visible surfaces but uh, yeah, we'll uh, get back to this guy in a couple of weeks when I start painting in there. I've already sanded these areas and I'd say we're probably 80% there so maybe one or two more layers and the washer dryer area will be ready for paint. Good morning guys. It is Saturday morning, also known as the day I turn 40. Before leaving the boat today, I'll hopefully apply the third and final layer of stinky goo to this area. But I'm gonna hold off on doing that until tonight so I don't have to walk around in the stink. But with just the two layers on here, I think we're already pretty close. Before I put the shelves in the long-term storage area, I wanna apply a little bit of insulation to the inside of the hull. Right in there, just to make sure we don't have any issues with condensation. Because the hull is a curved surface, it's not just gonna be a square piece of insulation, so I'm gonna have to make a little paper template. It doesn't have to be fancy or look good. This should do the trick. This is 19 millimeter Armaflex, which is most definitely overkill for just avoiding condensation, but it's what I've got, so I'll use it. This looks to be a nice snug fit, so uh, let's get this adhered in place. With the insulation and the shelves in place, that is the long-term storage area done. It's time to get the drawer boxes installed. I've got a big box of these drawer slides and I think I figured out a good system. I need a little bit of clearance underneath the drawer boxes and it turns out two stir sticks on top of each other is basically the perfect height. Then I just make sure that this is nice and flush with the front of the drawer box before attaching it with a couple of screws. Then I'll flip the box around and repeat the process on the other side. The other part of the drawer slide gets mounted so that it's flush with the front of the clothing locker and that should be it. Now the drawer should just slide on in if I can get it lined up correctly. There we go. Ta-da! A finished clothing locker. Well, kind of. I still need drawer fronts for all of these and a door for this section over here, but that's something I can do in a few months from now. And then there is a small issue with this top drawer. Something must have shifted when I was building this drawer box because it's just a little bit too wide. That means it binds pretty bad when you try to open it. Now, that's something I can easily fix. I can simply just take about half a millimeter off each side and then paint it again and the drawer will be perfect. 
Eesh, it looks like somebody's been a bad birthday boy. It is snowing outside. This big open area right next to the washer dryer area and the V berth is where the freezer is gonna go. To get power to that and also to all the stuff in the mast, I'm gonna have to run a little bit of conduit. Down here, I've got conduit that runs straight to the nav station and the distribution panels. The first step is gonna be to drill a hole over here and make the conduit a little bit longer. For the freezer, I've decided to go with a pre-built unit rather than building my own, again, to save a little bit of time. That should get here in about two to three weeks, although I have a feeling it might get delayed, but uh, we'll see what happens. I know the size of that, so I also know where I can drill the holes. So, uh, yep, let's get to some hole drilling. Look at this 30-year-old pristine plywood, not a single sign of rot. Considering that there is a chain plate located right above this big gaping open hole, of course I want to make sure that I get all of the edges sealed thoroughly. I'm going to do that while I'm painting all of this. So today I'm not going to make the final connection for the conduit, I just want to make sure that I've got enough conduit here and that it's all cut to the right lengths. The two connections I've made here are going to terminate in this area here, which is going to be a storage area next to the freezer. One of them is going to be DC, so that's for the freezer, for the windlass up on deck, for any outlets we might want in here in the V-berth area. The other one is going to be for AC, so that is for the dryer and the washing machine. The third piece of conduit that I haven't elongated yet is going to run down here underneath the cabin sole, pop into the clothing locker, go up the main bulkhead, and up here somewhere is where that little digital switching unit is going to get mounted. <laughs> I've made a little bit of progress. All three conduits are now connected. The third one runs underneath the cabin sole here, comes into this little seating area, goes into the clothing locker, comes up here where there's gonna be a bunch of stuff mounted. Ava and I have lovingly dubbed the technical compartment the man cave. And I think this is gonna turn into the man cave vacation home edition. The little box takes the input from the wind instrument and turns it into NMEA 2000. The big box is the GMS 10 box, that's the Ethernet box from Garmin. Over here is going to go that digital switching box, and then here maybe an AIS transponder. I think it's going to be really nice to have this little area inside of the clothing locker to make all of the connections for the stuff from the mast, and also for the lighting in here in the forward cabin. I think I've put it off for as long as I can. I uh, better clear out the chain locker and uh, shove myself in there. This is like the boat equivalent of a clown car. How much stuff do I have in here? The good news is that there isn't as much sanding to do in here as I remembered. That gray paint is very well adhered to the hull, so I'm just gonna give that a light sanding and paint over it. But yeah, there's a little bit of cleaning to take care of. Shoving myself in the chain locker is not something I enjoy. But the good news is, after a little bit of oak-glorious sanding, not only have I removed the remnants of the old windlass installation, so that's ready to install a new windlass, I've also sanded whatever needed to be sanded on the sides of the hull. I'll go grab a shower to get rid of all of this dust, and uh, then I'll enjoy what's left of my birthday. Good morning, guys. It is official. I'm now over 40. Only by one day, but still over 40. Last night I did a little bit more testing with the digital switching unit and the USB gateway I've got is definitely not compatible with this. I'll get my hands on a compatible USB interface and then in one of the upcoming videos we can program this little guy and I can show you why I'm so excited about this somewhat anonymous looking box. Here I've got a far less anonymous looking box which also answers the question what would be a really good birthday present for a boat owner that all already has all the sandpaper he needs. I've only just had this out of the box and used it for a few minutes, so I am no expert, but it's supposed to do some really cool things like display a chart right here on the watch and even let me control the friggin' autopilot from the watch. 
That's pretty James Bond-like if you ask me. I'm not much of a watch guy, but I am a sucker for a cool gadget, which this watch most definitely is. The watch is specifically made for boaters, so it has a ton of cool boat features, but seeing as I haven't really used it yet, I am, like I said, no expert. I'll start wearing this when I'm not working on the boat because I don't want to wreck it. That way I can get used to it. And then once I've gotten all of the Garmin stuff here, bought the boat connected and gotten the autopilot installed, well, then we can take a closer look at the watch because it seems like this is gonna kind of allow me to do a lot of cool stuff with all of the other stuff. So yeah exciting times. Last night I also got a third layer of stinky goo applied to the washer dryer area. This side over here is done. This side is about 99% there. Unfortunately I'm out of stinky goo so I'm gonna have to pick up some more tomorrow, Monday, before I can finish this. But yeah, the washer dryer area should be ready for paint in a couple of days. I am thoroughly pleased with the progress I've made this week with the help of my parents, getting all of the wood in the forward cabin sanded so that it's ready for either varnish or paint was a big step in the right direction. I also got the clothing locker finished. I just need the drawer fronts and the door. I got the conduit run in there and the washer dryer area is almost done. That means the only thing, the only big thing left in the forward cabin is well the freezer section. Don't get me wrong, there is still a lot of work to be done in here, but the last big messy thing is the freezer section. There's a bunch of grinding or sanding that needs to happen in here. And I think I will do that Monday because that way I can get the dusty messy job out of the way and then I can start varnishing the trim in the V-berth. Or before I do that, I should probably finish painting the inside of the lockers and the chain locker. But then I can varnish all of the trim, I can get this painted, I can put up insulation, cut the wooden slats, and presto, that will basically be the V-berth done. I still think I am on track to be able to move into the forward cabin in the end of February. The freezer, well, that might get delayed, that might mess the date up a little bit, but I think everything is on track for now. I've got a good plan for what I need to do for the next couple of weeks. So uh, yeah, I hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena for yet more DIY fun. And as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.